soon because tradition dictates only one survivor, right? <laughs> well, I don't think we're going off of no. horror movies. Well, you guys were bought by that handsome noble woman, uh, oh, and you overheard her saying that she wanted you all shipped to Zadanga. <laughs> And the following day, you were kind of cleaned up and filed into this three-story prison um, kind of wagon. And as part of a con uh, sorry, convoy that was heading down the road to Zazanga by land, she'd left, departed by a flyer, and uh, is long gone now. And so you guys are now being guarded by red slavers. And if you look on the on the play screen, you can see their tokens. And uh, you're locked in the cave at the third floor, the very highest floor of this particular prison wagon. You've been un en route for two very long, hot, sweaty days. It stinks of dirty bodies. And the food has been crappy, and the guards are sullen and sometimes take delight in poking you through the bars of the cage that you're in. So everyone can see that there, right? And um, when we left off, we just heard noises of some sort of attack with um, <coughs> seemed like flame arrows coming up. And this is the funnest part for me is I get to do my sound effects. <laughs> Let's see if they come on. Let's see. Are they working? Um, Can you I'm guys hear good. anything? Oh, yeah, yeah that's very, very good. Very faint. There. So you hear the sounds of battle. You smell smoke. The guards run to their various little balconies. There's a balcony here where I'm pinging. Here where I'm pinging. They start shouting at each other. We're under ambush. We're under attack. Half of them run down the stairwell. Some of them do, to go aid their fellows down in the bottom. A few of them stay and are grabbing their arms. And we're going to go into basically action now, combat. So how combat works in this system is that usually the players get a turn and then the enemies get a turn. The players, you guys can go in any particular order that you like. You can talk about it, you can use teamwork. But once you decide, say, Han has his turn, then he has to complete everything in his turn. And if you actually pull out the handout on action scenes and attack steps, um, you'll see um, that there's three types of actions in each action turn. There's a movement, there's conflict actions and spoken actions. And for those of you who are used to D&D, we look at the spoken actions as being like a free action. It's not just about talking. In this game, I'm going to allow you to, if you want to change weapons or drop something quickly, you can use a free action for a very minor interaction with some kind of item, okay? Um, conflict actions obviously are attack actions. Uh, movement actions are self-explanatory, okay? As far as uh, movement and range, if we look at, again, the handout, we have immediate, which is right in front of you. And then we have near, which is you can get to it in a turn. And if the sound effects are bothering you, just let me know, or you can turn them down on your master uh, level for uh, volume under the my settings icon, okay? So we have immediate for Mei Li. We have near where you can cross over and use your movement in that turn um, to get to, say you want to get to the captain of the slavers. You can use your movement to get there and then you can use your combat action to attack. And then if you needed to drop a broken sword and grab your dagger for your free action, you could do something like that. Make sense? Yeah. yeah. So we're going to start out with the guards are somewhat distracted and peering out over the balconies to get a, a, a look at who's attacking them. A couple of them are pulling out their radium pistols and firing down at the attackers. A couple of them are what? You cut out. Okay. A, a couple of them are pulling out their radium pistols and taking shots from the balcony at, at attackers. And 
you have so again in your cage you guys are all in there but you also have with you patterson uh, broad who is a jessumian that you met in the slave pits you also have a thark named tau tomja i don't know well let's just call him tau because vicky can't Tomja. pronounce anything <laughs> and he and he gets very excited he starts shaking the bars of the cage cage and he yells at you those are the war cries of my people and now we start with the player's turn. So what do you guys want to do? Mm-hmm. Anybody? Anybody? We're in cage. Are we in? We're in cages, right? Like You're in this one big cage together, and it's stinky. So the slavers are fighting the uh, the Farks, right? Yes. There has been an ambush by Thark raiders on this road to Z- Zadanga. And you are in a three-story high ask, prison wagon. And I you're think at the I'm going to ask Pal. Those are your your kind, but are they your people? Can you tell by the cries if that is your tribe? Because I I think I might have if they can guarantee our safety. You know, if they could, you know, we you know we will join. I have that idea that if we could, temp, you know, at least temporarily join our medal to theirs, you know, if Tal, is, is that a boy or a girl? Is that Tal is a guy. Okay. Is if it, he could, and you know if, that. If, if he could take us under his uh, wing, um, wings, we can, <laughs> you know, we will, you know, we'll join our medal to his if he can basically, you know, I might have an idea of how to get us out of here, but he'll basically be our ambassador to get to those people. Can can you tell if those are our is they're they're his kind, but are those his tribe? I hear the call of many clans that I know. So get in character and act this out, because I'm going to try and stay in character and act this out with you guys too. Um, I have a question. Like one of my, one of mine to fitting in. Now, can I kind of fitting in, like, almost almost like um, one of the guards? Well, right uh, now it's hard for you because you're yellow. <laughs> and you're not a red I Martian know. and you're a slave, right? But I mean, if you, wanna, if you want to like, talk to the guard, you can. Well, I know I don't have the disguise kit. I can't use the attribute master of disguise, right? Yeah, but, you don't have your kit. Yeah. Yeah, but but the fitting in. The fitting in is usually, you know, like in a different setting than something like we're we're in an ambush setting, right? Yeah. So it's like fitting into high society, or if you're gone undercover oh. with a guild of like flight mechanics, fitting in and slipping in and pretending to be one of them, right? Well, what I what I'm thinking is, is I could convince them that I'm trying to fit in here, and I'm. Spying. But you're actually one of them. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Like, you can try. Do you want to try? And yeah, just like remember, if you're gonna try, then um, you're gonna do everything in your turn at once. Yeah, I'm thinking. Let's. I'm gonna tell the guard. Like, pick one. So for this, I'd have to do it. A... We got slaver dude here. We've got. Yeah. Uh, I can't see this guy's number. What is he? Uh, Red guard two. Well, let's. And we got Red Guard 14. Do you want to talk to one of them? I'd like to talk to this one, uh, this one right here. Slaver Dude. Slaver Dude. Yeah. Okay. And if you want to move your token closer to him in the in the cage. Right there, right? Yeah, that's you. Yeah. So go ahead and let's role play this out for fun. Okay. Well, I, I need to talk to you. I need to whisper to you. Come on over here. Can you come talk to me for a second? I got some really important to tell you. Speak quickly. We're under attack, fool. Uh, hey, you know, I just want to let you know that I'm I'm just secretly with, with these people, and I'm actually, a, you know, with you guys. I'm just here spying on them, but I need to get out important information about these crazy people I'm with. Okay. Because I got. Okay, so for that. 
I should do a roll, roll right? Let's roll it. Okay. That's a really good example. So you're going to try and convince him. So I'm going to try to convince him what, I'm on his side and I'm secretly spying on these people. Exactly. So let's take a look at what, uh, what would be a good, your two modifiers would probably be what, empathy and cunning? Um, yeah, I like that. Me. Yeah, and cunning, yeah. So it'd be yeah. thirteen, right? So, so now, so go into your rolling your dice, and this is going to be I'm an opposed at, test, right? So you're going to roll, and he's going to roll. But, Sorry, go ahead. Obviously, and I'm looking at fitting in, right? So it says to add a bonus d twenty with test. Fantastic. So instead and, of two d twenty on your dice roller under your icon, right? Three. You're going to add yeah. three, and then okay, your so. you what's your uh, empathy and cunning? T Together, so we get your target number. Um, I think it's empathy is five and Connie is eight, so it's thirteen for the target number. Okay, so make sure in your dice roller under target number you have thirteen. Make sure under advanced roll you have three D twenty, and when you have it set uh, up, hit roll. Three dice there, right? Yep. Okay, so let's roll. And then when it says D20, do I add anything to the plus nope, zero? No, leave 20 as it is, and plus zero always remains zero. Okay, so Just I'll roll sure right now. make sure you have your, your target number, yeah? Okay, so what does it say? Uh oh, 7 to 12. Yep. So I've got two successes. Two successes, because your target number was 13. So 13. you only needed one, because your difficulty was just one. Now I'm going to yep. have him roll, Okay. Okay. And Sounds his good. role would be daring is always a defensive role. And I guess empathy again, right? Yeah. So exactly. he would have a target number of 11. Okay. Because I've got his stats right here. And he's only going to roll two. Okay. And let's see how many successes yeah. he gets. He got one, one success. success and one failure. Mm -hmm. So it sounds to me like he's somewhat convinced. But no, no. So when it's a tie, we take we check out who has the most uh, momentum afterwards. So because Chad got two successes, he has one extra momentum, whereas yeah. the Red Slaver has one success, no extra momentum. So Chad succeeds. Congratulations! Okay. And so the Red Guard looks at you. And so what, what now needs to happen is you've earned a momentum, so I'm going to deal you out a momentum. So you guys see your little icons that, at the bottom? You, you, you guys have... At the bottom. So I've dealt out those luck. So the ones that you have now are luck. Yeah. And now I'm going to deal Chad a momentum token. Okay. Okay, and you can't have, because of your minimum amount, I think you can't have more than four. So do you guys see that? Chad now has one momentum above his name. Everybody see that? Okay. And so that's how yes. we're tracking it. Good for you. Your first momentum earned. I know. Okay. Okay. So, so let's now that's the end of my we'll play this right? out. So he's like, he he bends close to you in the bars. Yeah. And he goes, so you work for my mistress? That's what you're trying yes. to tell me? Yes. Come. Come to the gate. And okay. he waves you over. Bring your token over to the front gate where he is. And he quickly takes a key from his belt. Opens the gate. And pulls you through. Okay? That's going to end Chad's turn. It's okay. still the player's turn. It's still my turn? No, it's every... So all the players, it's you guys us. do your turns all, all together. Okay. So Chad's turn's uh. done. It's still the player's turn. So the rest of you players, who wants to go next? We have – now, Chad, let's pull you. I'm going to pull you right out of there. He's pulled you right okay. out. Yeah. He is starting well, to close the bar door. Who wants to go next? The door's not closed yet, though. I'll grab the I'm, door. <laughs> you want to grab the door, Zach? Yep. Okay, yep, I'm let's go ahead and roll. And because you're going to be doing um, grabbing the door, let's try cunning and might. So what's your cunning and might added together to get your target or number? Or maybe, or maybe. No, let's just go with this. This is fun. Huh. So okay. what's Chad's cunning and might? To oh, yeah. might together. 
Oh, sorry, is it Chad or it's Zax? Oh, or sorry, both? Zax. Are we both? My, my, sorry, my mistake. Zax, what does your cunning and might added together get your target number? Uh, 13. Okay, so bring up your dice roller. Yep, got it. Plug okay. in 13. Yep. And I'm going to say this is our chance, uh, you know, come on, guys, and, and encourage people to help. Okay, so that's going to be your spoken action. And your combat action is going to be grabbing that door. So go mm -hmm. ahead and roll 2d20 with 13 as your target number, and let's see if he succeeds. Ooh, I see one success. One success. Better. Okay, so the red man's gonna going to use his uh, daring and might to try and resist your grabbing that door. So that's he's got a target number 10, and he's rolling two dice. Let's see what happens. Zero success. All right, good job. Oh. Zax, you managed to wrestle the door out of the hands of the slaver and hold, pull it full on back. And the slaver is now a gas, right? Who wants to go next? That ends going to end Zax's turn. Zax is holding the door open for you guys. I'm going to suggest, because of earthly muscles and all that stuff, <laughs> I'm going to... Try and make signs and suggest, and after all, his Barstomian has improved, my English has improved consider considerably since the last time. Um, I'm going to suggest to Patterson that, you know, with his, his strength, he should try and, you know, sort of try and see if he can barrel through and, you know, punch the slaver out. Okay, I'm going to say, in the time it takes you to try and talk to him, he, you're, you're losing time. And he doesn't understand. You're going too fast. He's scared by the noises. He's totally okay. discombobulated because there's just he doesn't understand what's going on. Okay. So that's going to be your you know spoken what? action, okay? But you can still have your combat action and your movement. So we're going to keep ta on Tanza until she finishes her turn, okay, guys? Okay. Cool. So you can huh. still move. So you're trying to talk to him. He's not. He's freaking out. He doesn't know what's going on. You can still move, and you can still do a combat action if you want, Tanza. I think you should do a combat action. Let's weaken him a bit. Um. No. So or you can stay with him. You can stay with him. I say something. I say something in Barstomian that's basically like, you know, oh come on, you're supposed to be from the same planet as our great warlord. <laughs> and he's like, um, just he's gesturing to you like. And he's saying something in his language, like, and he's making like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? Yeah. Freaking out. Uh, yeah, I said it, and I said it really fast. So, um, let's see, what kind of combat action should I do? Any ideas? A dagger. So they don't have any. Yeah, you get his attention, put him to the bars, and I'll run him through. You guys don't have any weapons on you just now. I should I shouldn't just mention that again. You can oh, disarm. Right. Sorry, I thought we had All you have something. is a plain slave harness. Oh, have I got like a leather strap or something on me? You have your harness yeah. on you, but don't forget, okay. Zax has pulled the door wide open for you guys. The slaver is just standing there. Okay. I oh, was that, that's I was that's All what right, maybe that way I just yelled charge and we all and you know try and get us all to rush him. Use your loincloths to strangle him. That's what I was going to do. <laughs> he is okay. So again, the door is wide open. Zax, Zax has ripped it from his hands. The door is wide open, and he is standing just in, in the door. You can easily run and charge him if you like. Don't okay, go so I run. until it's your turn. Uh, excuse me. It's Tanza's I'll... turn now. Tanza, do you want to charge him, or do you want to stay back and let someone else do it? Sure, is I'll it... charge him. Okay. So you're going to use your movement and your combat. You're going to come up and charge him. Let's go ahead and do um, cunning and might to see if you can knock him back out of the doorway so that everyone else can get out. Do you want to do that? Okay. All right. Okay, go ahead and roll. Uh, what's your cunning and might together, please? Cunning and might is... To get your target number. Uh, 11. Okay, so under your dice roller, bring it all up. Input 11 for your target number. And uh, go ahead and roll two d20 and hit roll, and you should. Let's see what you get. 
Ooh. One success. That's good. Let me just see. He's going to oppose it, right? So he's got um, daring and might for 10. Let's see what happens. And no, you run smack into him. It's a tie. So you don't succeed. He doesn't succeed. You guys run smack into each other, and you're stalled out at the at the door. And that's going to complete Tansa's turn. Now we have Pamela and Had still remaining for their turns. What what would you two? Who wants to go next between the two of you? Pamela Had, hello. Did so. We the door's open. What's happening with the slaver? Slaver is still standing, blocking the door. Tanza just ran to try and bulldoze him over, but he stood rock solid, and she kind of bounced off. Of so him back. I'm gonna try and um, basically uh, jump at him and loop my leather harness around his neck and pull him backwards. I like it. I like okay. that too. Well, he's facing you head on. Okay. So he's facing you. And you're right in front of him. So you guys are face to face, right? Okay. I'll still try and get it around his arm or his neck and yank him. Oh, yank him in, <laughs> into the cage or out. Yeah, and sort of and, and sort of sling him to the back of the cage with using the strap for momentum, if I can get it around. Fantastic. Um, so you use your free action or whatever to whip off part of your harness to get a strap? Yep. And go ahead and do an attack. And what do you, th what do you think? It's going to be cunning. Plus, yep. I think maybe daring to do the maneuvering to get the strap around his neck or around his arm or whatever you're targeting. What do you think? So 14. Ooh, that's a pretty good good one. So set your target number. Right, let me just see if I can... Right, target number is 14. I can type it, can't I? Right, yep. And, and then... 2D2... Yep, 2d20, and then hit roll. Make sure you have the less than icon on. I think so. Fantastic. Okay, so let's see if he, again, it's an opposed roll to see if he can meet that or if you succeed. So his, he's going to have daring, and he's, man, he's just getting the crap kicked out of him, isn't he? Um, <laughs> daring and might, I suppose. Cunning. Uh, yeah, well, no, for him. Cunning's for might, attacks, yeah. daring's for defense. So yeah, sorry, I thought we're well, talking about him, aren't we? Yes. Yep, no might. problem. So we're going to have a target number of 10. Let's see what he does. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, and he's That's rolled awesome, a 1. Greg. So he gets an extra on top of that. So he actually has three successes. Again, ones count as two successes. They're critical successes, right? So uh, he's got three successes. You have two successes. So he manages to dodge your strap and you don't get a hold of him and your attack doesn't succeed oh well oh well okay and let's see here that brings us pamela <clears throat> seeing the commotion on the front i'm gonna see if i can assist by grappling okay you're gonna try and tie him up, or are you gonna try and push him yeah. back out of the road? Try to push him, push him, tie him down. Try to get him prone on the ground. All right, so you're like gonna do a WWF run and jump and smack him to the yeah. ground. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Cunning uh, and might. What's your target number? Uh, just hold one second. Uh, oh, nine. <laughs> okay. Right. We'll see if we can do this. Oh. You got one success. That's good. Let's see what he yep. does. Uh... Oh. <laughs> Zero. You hard. succeed, Pamela. Well, he's yeah. kind of <laughs> off balance from Had's attempt when his strap. That throws him off balance. You're able to take advantage of his um, his vulnerability and run and jump and throw him down to the ground against... With your both your bodies crashing into, I'm going to move your thing too. Both your bodies crashing okay. into the table, and you've got him pinned on top of the table. Huzzah! 
Can I shout something? Can I shout Move. something? Yeah. Can I shout something? <laughs> Grab a weapon. <laughs> Try to take a weapon off of him. Yeah, she's right now got him grappled down, okay? So now it's their turn. So we finished all the players. We'll just wait. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have to play these guys, aren't I? Ugh. The green guy yeah. comes out, laughs as he runs past um past uh, Pamela on top of the red slaver. He's just <laughs> laughing. An evil dark laugh. <laughs> Puny red man. <laughs> and then he runs up to the first guard and he's gonna try and grapple the first guard. And I'm just gonna do a quick What's the red guy got? Or green guy? He's got cunning and daring of 11. I don't like doing this because it's a waste of my time doing all these guys, but whatever. Stick with the rules. One success. Ooh. And then the red guard is going to try and fend him off. Daring. Okay. Sorry, guys. Ooh, one oh success. yeah, well they're tuscling it up, but uh, the Tark isn't able to do any damage or to grapple him. Okay, so now and Patterson is just quivering in his boots. He doesn't know what's going on, and he's standing at you, going Tanda, and he's speaking English, and he goes, "What's going on? What's happening? What is all this?" And he's kind of freaking <laughs> out. He's, I basically just turn around and I say, "We are trying to escape in as clear <laughs> English as I can." Okay. So now it's the non uh it's the enemy's turn. Okay? So the slaver is gonna try and throw Pamela off of him and regain his feet from on top of this crappy table. He's gonna use cunning and might for ten as his target number. And Pamela, you're gonna have to defend. Well he got zero successes, but go ahead and defend to see if anything fun happens. So you would use Thanks. daring and probably might as well to defend in the opposition role test. So daring and might is your target number. Oh, okay, so 11. Okay, so put that in your target number and roll your 2d20 and see what happens. Ah. One success. One success. Yeah, you not only... he he fails miserably, but you actually get a knee down on his throat. <laughs> so, any next time he tries to do it, he's going to have to do a DC of 2, because you've got him pinned down so tight. Okay? okay. Oh. That sounds like a fair result from that. That brings okay. us to guard number 2. He's uh, He had his, his weapon out, and he's going to try and stab Tao with his weapon. And uh, let's see, with his long sword. So he's got a cunning of six and daring of six. So that's 12 for the target number for his sword attack. Zero successes. So Whoa. Tao managed to, like, I'm not even going to do the opposition roll. He just manages to, like, push his arm away with one of his forearms and block him. And then this <laughs> other guard 14 yells, The slaves are free! Come back, <laughs> hey, slaves are free out the balcony and then runs <laughs> over. Or may I suggest this turn of phrase? The slaves are revolting. Well, of course they are. <laughs> <laughs> They've been stinking and sweating and peeing in a bucket for days. So he's going to try and attack <laughs> Pamela and and uh, with his sword. Okay? okay. While she's busy grappling him. Now I'm going to say Pamela to defend. Now this is the thing. I can set difficulty levels for that are different than DC one. You're gonna have a DC of two because you're obviously your knee and your one arm and your weight is on yeah. the guy pinned down. So he's gonna attack you. Okay. With his sword, I'll roll the attack first, and then you can roll your defense. So he's got rolled a one, so he mm. gets two successes out of that because it's a critical oh. success. Go ahead and okay. do your defense, which is gonna be daring. And can and might. Uh, I suppose you could probably do. I don't know. Uh, daring and cunning, maybe. I don't know. Daring and might, whatever, which, whichever one you want. Uh, I'll have to check. <laughs> uh, daring and cunning is my highest. Okay, go ahead and use that. Okay.
Okay, so because he rolled really two successes, you've rolled two successes, you man yep. managed to deke him out and dodge his weapon, and no harm comes to you. Oh, that, good for you. Okay, so now all, everyone's had their turn. That ends this round, which means Chad did not use his momentum. So Chad will lose, lose the momentum. And so I, I could have given it to so I could have given it to somebody, right? Yep. Okay, I see. Fine. That's and it's gone. So so that's why I'm saying sharing at the end of your turn, if you got leftover momentum, like if you haven't used it or you know what I mean, if you think you gotta really it. Yeah, it's a resource that you gotta really think about sharing or keeping. Like if you have two momentum in there, you might as well keep it. Because you're going to lose one at the end of the round, but you'll have one for next turn, right? I could have given it to somebody like Tanza, for instance, when yeah. Tanza was trying to rush the door, right? Yeah. So those of you who start, if you're going to go first, really think about whether you should be shuttling that momentum down to people that come after you. Okay. In a right. turn order. Okay. So that's something, again, it's a, it's a learning thing, right? Okay. We're starting the second round. Players, it is now your turn. Again, Zax uh, has uh, the, the door to the slave cell open. Yep. Pamela's on top of the one slaver, and she's being attacked by Red Guard 4. Red Guard 2 is fighting the, the Green Martian. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. The slaver that Pamela is fighting against I will... I'll punch him in the face. Okay, the slaver is pinned on the table. She's on top of him. Y you you would have to try and get around her. Right? Yeah. So if you want to then move your token around to the other side of the table, because right now her ass is in your face. Right? She's she's on top of him, on the on the table. The, sla the slaver is almost the supervisor of all these other guards, right? Is he? Well, that's what I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Over the last two days, you see that he's 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 an officer of the slaves, where the red guards are just. Well, my, my so thinking is let's let my thinking is I should try and convince. Convince the slaver like stop fighting with uh, Pimalia, because psychedelic drugs and she's actually you know Pimalia is my assistant, so stop fighting <laughs> like stop resisting. I you don't know. It might a... may have gone past that point. <laughs> like I, I'm, <laughs> like okay, I'm that's thinking. Good idea. I'm thinking. Let's use the same role I did before. Like let's use the fitting in. Okay, it's... but I want to remind you, and I'm not sure how familiar you are with this, but the the yeah. Tal, he's the Green Martian known as Tharks, right? Yeah. And it's his people that are attacking this caravan. So hypothetically, yeah. they're probably coming to rescue you guys. So making oh. allies with the slavers to fight probably the Tharks, if you <laughs> you know it might you might be on the wrong side of the ship. And as a Barsoomium, you're gonna know that. You're gonna know Tharks. You know Tharks are allies to Helium and to the Red Martians. Oh. Right, and you're in a sort of an alliance with the Red Martians all through John Carter, Warlord of Mars Listen. too. As far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter whose side we take as long as we get out of it. But as soon as yeah. the parts are keeping these guys busy, um, we need we, we need uh, to we need to convince one of these people to show us the way out, though. Well, Otherwise, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, we fight the slavers and we only fight the farks if they come on. And okay. Then we get out. Yeah, good idea. I like oh. that. Okay. I'm a fan of this plan. Okay, let's do Tanza with her thing since she piped up first. You want to you want to punch that slaver in the face with your yeah. yeah. Let's roll it. Cunning and might, unarmed strike. So Eleven. Okay. And can I use any of that threat? That the five. Can I use any of that? That's your luck. You want to be really careful with your luck. Now you could use luck to get an okay. automatic Never mind. success. Okay, so you got two successes, and I'm gonna have him defend with the opposed thing, but he's gonna have a DC of two. Okay. He's also pinned down, so. Yep, yeah, that's why I'm making his difficulty level higher than yours. Okay. So he's got daring and might. So he's got to get at least two to even succeed. He's got one success. He fails. You hit. 
Okay, so this is your guys' first experience with doing damage. So it's an unarmed strike. So now, uh, and this you guys haven't done this for a while, go to your dice roller, Tanza, and change your uh, advanced roll to, uh, you're going to have two D6s. Okay, this is combat dice. So this, this is roll on D6 dice. <laughs> okay. Okay, that was Chad, but that was don't mine. Need Sorry. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> and you don't need a, a target number on this, so just go two d six and go ahead and hit roll. Okay, and now I'm just going to bring up the handout to refresh our memories uh, on the combat dice. Oh, sure, shit. Can I find it when I need it? No. So I see. How it works is uh, ones and twos are at their face value, three and four are zero, and five and sixes are plus one and an effect. So okay. you unfortunately rode a three, three and, four. and four, so there you hit him, but it doesn't seem to damage him. And he kind of gives you this dirty smile, like a uh, Schwarzenegger smile, like you didn't even phase me, little girl. Kind of that smirky kind of asshole smile. But you did hit, but you didn't do any damage to him, okay? Okay. Now All again, right. I'm gonna. I wish I could find that in here. Damage dice. Here it is, and I'm just gonna show it to you guys to refresh our memories. Oh. And you guys all see it there. So yep. when you roll a one, it's one. Uh, sorry, two is worth two. Three and four is zero. Five and six is one stress plus an effect. Okay. So that's under damage dice in your handouts if you ever need it. Okay. Sure. So that's Tanza. Players, which one <laughs> of you wants to go next? <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm frustrated. You know, still in the cage. Uh, so I'm going to come out, uh, and uh, the guy that's right next to uh, Pamela and the slaver that attacked Pamela. So number uh, fourteen. Whatever. Oh, you guys can't yeah, see their yeah. their names. Okay, I'm going to bring up their names. Go ahead. You want to go ahead and attack okay. him, okay. or uh, what do you want to do? So he's kind of distracted because he's got a sword yeah. out and he's going after Pamela. Right. What? Tell me exactly how and what you're going to do. Okay, so I'm gonna come out. I'm gonna grab him by uh, the back of the uh, the the jacket or whatever clothes he's wearing, and pull him backwards and smash his head into the uh, the, into bars the bars of the cage. I love it. Yep. Go ahead and do it. So that's gonna be a might, I think. That's gonna be cunning and might, hey guys. Mm -hmm. And if yep. anyone thinks differently, just go ahead and pipe up. So when you add cunning and might together, this is your first one. Well, yep, that's your 13. first one. What? Okay. Yeah. 13. Okay, so he's got to defend with uh, daring and I suppose might as well. And this but, is this is kind of like a sneak attack because she's she's focused elsewhere. No, he right? can see you coming out. He's still facing uh -huh. that direction. Uh -huh. Hey, it's uh, not D and D, my friend. It's not D and D. <laughs> but he's got a target number of 10. Oh, I'm rolling uh -huh. wrong, wrong ones. Stupid GM. What we got? Failed. Failed. Mm. Right on. Wow. Okay. Zero successes. Zaz had one success. You succeed. You grab him. You smash his head against the bars. So let's roll your damage. Damage and again, you're going to dice roller, and you're going to do minimum of two D6, and then hit the roll. You don't need a target number. Nice. Okay, so you got a six, which is going to be one in an effect, and a four, which is nothing. Okay, but I have no quarter, which means I get to re-roll four. Okay, and read no quarter just so we can all learn about it. Uh, you may re-roll uh, the result of one combat die for damage. Fantastic. Do it again. Roll one more. We'll keep the six and roll that four again. Okay. Rolling. Ooh. No, didn't help. Okay. Didn't help, but it's a nice thing to have as a firstborn. So a lot of these talents and traits are part of your archetype or part of your racial yep. type. So that's a pretty sweet thing to remember. So thanks, Dana. So you get uh, one stress and and uh, one effect. And in this case, because you don't have a weapon for the effect, we'll just say the weapon's going to double it to give you two stress damage against him. So as you do that, um, his head, his skull is cracked against the bars of the cage, and he crumbles with his brain matter coming all out, and he is gone. Uh. He is dead, dead, dead. So, um, Zax gets first kill today, you guys. And hey. 
Eyes up. Hey. Okay. Good job. Uh, as my Order. bonus action, can I take his uh, weapons from him or not? For um, my... Your combat yeah. action was uh, you did movement to get in front of him and grab him. You did combat, yep. so you can use your free thing to wrestle his sword from his dying hand. Okay, I will it do won't, that. You won't have time to strip him of his uh, harness or to grab anything else, but you can grab his sword from his hand. So you are now armed with a sword. Sound good? Okay. That leaves Sounds us good. With, and uh, I, sorry? Yeah, good. And I, I'm just going to, like, kind of growl and, you know, yeah, you know, say, come oh, on. You've done it. You've done it with grabbing yeah. this thing. So we're going right. to use that spoken action is going to be your free action, too. So if you're going to grab the sword, then okay. that's all the time you have. Okay, guys? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we've got Han and Pamela. Who wants to go next? Um, I can go. I can go. I want to move. Oh, sorry, and Chad. Sorry too. Sorry. Go here and use my. Um, it's almost like a scarf. My red scarf. Mm -hmm. to try, try and try and strangle the slaver. Okay, so again, you guys actually the pictures aren't accurate because you were stripped to just a oh, very not, plain okay. slave harness. Did you want I to do something else to him? Bare hands and try to strangle him. Okay. Right on. You guys are Good vicious. Idea. Use those big meaty hands in here. <laughs> That's right. So, use use so your for banana this, I'm hands. Using, I'm using cunning and might of so my Yep, so 13. add those together for your target number. So it's thirteen, so I so I'm using two dice. Okay. Two D twenty with thirteen as your target yeah. number. 15, and I didn't see that number here. You got zero successes. Here. Okay. So he's just slippery with sweat and stuff, and you can't seem to get quite in there. And your hands are slippery, and you're clawing at him, so you scratched him, but you haven't been able. I'm not even going to do opposition because you, you didn't have any successes. So we're going to speed things okay. up. And that leaves us with Had or Pamela. Who wants to go next? So I'll talk to Patterson. Okay. Now listen. <clears throat> now listen, Patterson, me old mate. You come with me and I'll look after you and we'll get out of here, all right? And the reason I'm saying this is if I've got a bonus for being a bodyguard. Mm -hmm. So I thought if I look after Patterson on the way out, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, you can babysit the earth, man. Oh, good. <laughs> the question I'm gonna is... The, the question is, does he understand you? Well, I'm going to kind of pull him off uh, this way, if I can go out this way and take okay. him with me. Okay. Yeah, hold his hand. How, about, how about you roll? Um, let's just do it for again. We're just practicing and learning the system. Go ahead and roll um, reason and empathy. Right. And then I'll roll him for uh, probably the same thing and see if he understands you or how Seven much. Because he's got a plus. little bit of Basumian. Because, I mean, the thing is, I studied. I actually went to school, and I studied the language. But you've, you've already had your turn, haven't you? Yeah. So uh, you just, uh, no, you just let, Had, let Had do what he wants. I'm just giving uh, Had a, a reality check. Uh, so he actually, uh, so can he's he actually got, communicate? So he's got, um, he's got a nine target for understanding and reason. Yeah, I'm guessing roll. if he's... I'm guessing if he's been around a while, he might understand some basic words and vice yeah. versa. So go and roll and see. Ten and eighteen. Success. And he's got one success. So we'll say the universal understanding of two fighting men comes through. He grips your arm by the elbow, nods, and lets you lead him out. So, so we're going to kind of go out, out towards these steps. I don't know how far I can move, but yeah. There we go, and that'll be my action. Okay. You're not even going to come and help? Do you guys want to be at the top of the stairs, or where do you want to be? Yeah, that'd, that'd be good. I'm figuring you guys have got it covered, actually. <laughs> okay. Thanks a <But> lot. <laughs> if needs be, I'll, I'll jump in. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Cool. So Patterson and Hatter are teaming up as a tag team. I have and a good memory. Just, Pamela, you're on top of that slaver. What are you going to do? Uh, can I wrestle a sword from him? <clears throat> you could probably uh, grab his dagger. Okay. I mean, I Chad is still choking down. him. Chad is still choking him. Well, Chad didn't get a good grip on him, so... No, I didn't. So, to see if, to see if Pamela steals the dagger... 
Yeah, Would that be that? cunning? That's yep. the no, cunning and reason. Because let's say you're using your problem solving things on where his jaggers okay. and how to get him without losing grip of him, okay? And we're going to say your DC is going to be two on this because you're trying to keep him immobile as well, okay? Yeah. Okay, so it's and, 11. Okay, and he's going to be twisty turny on you. So of he's going to have. I'm just going to have him do his 10. Okay. Go ahead and roll. One success. Uh Yes. One success. No, he's he's trying to rock you off, and you are unable to grab hold of his dagger. Okay. Do you want to stay there, or do you want to jump off him, or what do you want to do? You want to yell uh, at somebody? Because <clears throat> that was your combat action. Yeah, that was my combat action. So you got movement, and you got your spoken action slash free action left. I'm going to stay on top of him, and I'm going to yell out, uh, can someone please knock this person out or do something to him? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's everyone's turn then, hey? Yeah. Okay. He's going to try and dislodge you on his turn. Okay. So it's going to do cunning and might. <coughs> and it's going to be ten. And then can you do an opposition thing for daring and might, please? Which is daring and... Daring and might, to see if you can physically hold him down. So add your daring and add your might. And 11 is Great. the target number. Yeah, so you're able to keep him pinned down. And oh. he would have had a difficulty of two, so he would have failed anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that means Yay! I've got the red guard over here battling the green guy. I forgot to have the green guy do his turn, but that's okay. They're grappling, and... I'm going to roll. Oh! oh. Yeah, that's a failure or a critical. Uh, yeah, that's right. It's a complication. So uh, with that complication, I'm going to say Tile is able to... Disarm the guy with his forearms and with his top right arm, grab the guy by the neck and twist it and break it. And this this red guard is dead, 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 dead. And the uh. dark lets out a mighty battle cry. Oh, yeah, all that. <laughs> and oh, good. We're taking him down. That's it. So at the end of the round, there's no momentum for anyone to lose. We gotta really keep track of that, and it's gonna be a player's turn now. So I've I've got a sword. I'm gonna go over and try and uh, like go around and try and stab the slaver that uh, Pamela is holding down. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna move this token out of your way so you can set yourself up where you need to be. Zax, if you want to move closer. Okay. So it's melee. That's your you're in immediate vicinity, so you can strike him with a melee weapon. So. With the sword, that's going to be... Who is it that we said that was? Is that cunning and daring with the sword? Let's double check. Now that you are armed. Melee attack is cunning and daring. And we're okay. just going to show it to you guys and show it to our folks at home. <laughs> that are getting... Is it that boring, really? <laughs> okay, there you go. So you guys see that? There's our melee attacks. Yep. Okay. Okay. How'd you do? 19. I got oh. one success. One success. So he's got to do a twisty tur turry, and he's going to have a DC of two because he's pinned down. Uh -oh. And see if he can scramble or twist out of the way. Oh! Uh -huh. He makes it. He's massive twist, and your sword chips into the table instead of him. Oh, wow. Okay. <clears throat> So that is... Did you want to move or do any spoken action? Zex? Zach? Zach? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to growl, and this is a slippery son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. surprised he's still alive. Everybody else's turn. Who wants to go next? I'll go again. Okay, Tanzu, what are you doing? You're going to pound him in the face again? Uh, just try and mess him up. Just general mayhem. <laughs> I'm kind of fed up with this whole 
with, with, with his struggling and his, you know, feeling bad for Pamela here. And it, so I, yep. I'm just gonna try and just do something, mess him up, trip him. Um, well, he's okay. Uh, he's on top of the table. Pamela's on top of him. He's not standing. He's a flat on his back on the table. And yeah, she I'm is just on gonna top try and wait. I'm just gonna try and wail on him. Okay. General wailing. You want to do cunning and might for like an arm, an arm strike? Sure. Okay. So let's see. So cunning, cunning and might. Yeah. So that's eleven. Okay. Two D twenty. Oh. Sorry. Wrong thing. <laughs> oh, that would have been good. <laughs> What was the target number? DC one. Eleven. Cause she's not she's not impaired, so you definitely hit. Uh, well, not definitely. He's got a you got one success, so he's got to do two successes in order to dodge. Ooh, twenty. Oh wow. So I'm gonna just say uh, there's a complication because we rolled a twenty. I'm just gonna have that cancel out to success and say your blow hits. Go ahead and roll two d six. For combat damage. So congratulations, you hit him in the face again. Let's see if you actually hurt him. <laughs> Is my target number still 11? No, you don't do target numbers for combat dice. It's just strictly what you roll. So 2d6. D6. Don't worry about your target sure. number. It doesn't matter what your target number is. Okay, so I don't know what to, cause I, I don't know what to put into that, that thing. Yeah, but it's just a d6 right now, isn't it? It's 2d6, so you can leave it. Yeah. You don't even have to change it. You can just leave it because we're going on what numbers you actually roll, not the amount. Okay, so again, going back to combat dice, a three is nothing, a six is one damage and an effect. Okay. Um, so you actually do some damage to him. Let's see what he's got for damage. Okay, so because you have an unarmed strike, I'm just going to say it's double damage, and that's going to be... Two stress levels off of him. And just for fun, because we're learning, normally I wouldn't show you guys this because it's kind of fun to have a mystery of, okay. of what, how hurt he is. But you should okay. be able now, if you click on him, or you see his bar, you can see the damage level to his bar there. Yeah, it's gone down, yeah. Yeah, there he goes. So you can get kind of a hint of the stamina. He's a little bit stronger than those other guys because he is captain of the guard. So Tanza, that was a great job. Way to get Yay. you busted his nose and Please. there's blood spurting everywhere. And I'm just this little thing. Like in human terms, I'm basically I, I'm, bas I'm basically pretending that I'm only like 16 in human years. So he, yeah, I got this. I got him. You done been punched. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now. Uh, whose turn? We still got, uh, who needs to go? Had, Chad, and Pamela? Do you guys want to, the ones with the slaver, you guys want to finish them off? Yeah, let's finish them off. Uh, Pamela, would you like to go, or? We've lost Pamela, oh. so go ahead, Chad. I'll go, uh, I'm going to try strangle him again. Okay. So where's oh. Pamela? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> she might have gone to the bathroom. <laughs> so I'm, my target number here, guy doing a cunning and might, I guess. Thirteen. Yeah. Are you, this way, are you strangling him? Yeah, okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, cunning and might, go ahead. And that was one Ooh. success. Ooh. Okay. Let me see if he dodges. Again, he's got difficulty of two because he's pinned down. Oh. So he fails. You are able to do some damage to him. Go ahead and roll 2d6 for an unarmed strike because you're strangling him. And see if you actually... Oh. So you got a four and a one. So you do one stress to him. You guys see how that works again? Yep. Three and four is nothing. <laughs> one is one stress, two is two stress, and... Five and six are one stress plus an effect. So he's got to go down. So yeah. you've got a grip on his neck, and you're strangling the life out of him. And let me just update his points here. He's gone down a little bit. 
So now anything he tries to do to oppose you guys, he's going to have a DC of 6. Okay? Pamela, are you there? Yep. Okay, so you're on top of him. We've now got um, Chad strangling him, and you see um, Tanza's pounding him in the face. What do you want to do? Okay, I want to take the try to get his dagger again. Okay, go ahead and do that. Uh, whatever we decided that was before, cunning and reason, I think, to grab it. Now, with the slinger no, also had oh, no <laughs> successes. He's a twisty uh, little. Sh yep. Okay, and so had we're with you and Patterson now. <coughs> had. Oh, sorry. Yep. Um, I lost you for a second there. I'm back. Uh, so I'm going to call for everyone to uh, head down the stairs. I know, uh, and they're still dealing with the slaver, aren't they? He's not quite... Yeah. Um, yeah. He's not, not quite, quite dead. dead. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'll start heading down the stairs, <laughs> uh, calling for Patterson to follow me. But And Patterson grabs you by the harness and points to Tanza, and he says something in broken English... Can't leave Tanza, which you probably don't understand, but Tanza might hear. And he's calling out for yeah. Tanza, 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 and he's pulling your hat's harness like he, there's no way he's leaving without her. Then, and, fine, we'll wait. Okay. Do you need and, a help? Do you need help? Yeah, so I need. yell at Had, help us kill this bastard. All right, I'll um, I'll run in. <laughs> And, Patterson uh, looks quite strong. He looks very, very strong. Yeah, I'll run in and um, I don't know what I'll uh, sort of punch this guy in the solar plexus or something. Well, pick a different <laughs> spot because then you're going to hit Pamela's ass. Oh, of course right she's <laughs> um, she's prone, not supine. Um, yeah, so, and, I'm, but, and, I'm, and I'm strangling him as well. So yeah, I'll just yeah, I'll try and try and break part of him as well <laughs> it's kind of a free-for-all i can't believe it's taking this many of us to, uh... <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna tell you this is worse than the, than the war hoon last time yeah go ahead Hatch. okay roll your uh, unarmed attack so i'm looking at uh, 14 you're going, again, you're going in, the, in the side trying to hit him in the in the kidneys or something from on the side or something hey uh, no, not 14. Uh, hang on. So we do your cunning and might because we're going to use that as an arm attack. And I might be doing yep. it wrong, but it makes sense to me because it's the so strength six, of your muscles. Five. So we're looking at 11. Okay. Okay. No problem. Bear with me. I'm one. No problem. So 2d20. And then your target number. One success. One success. He's gonna roll to try and whatever, squiggle out of the way. But he's got a he's got DC at three now because there's so many people on him. Yeah. So I really he's got to get three successes to even come close. Zero successes. So you managed to hit. So go ahead and roll your damage. So he's gonna do two. Change the dice to D six. D six. Yep. And just it. hit roll. You don't have to do anything with target number. Nice. So you got one damage from the one. You've got a one damage from six and plus an effect. And because you're unarmed, we're just going to give you three damage altogether instead of just the two. So he's now right. taken three points of damage from you did a solid short shot to his kidneys. And that's kind of knocked the wind out of him. So any defense he's going to do is now going to go up to DC four. Okay. Wow. So let me take that down. So nice, nice unarmed strike. Yeah, I, w I wasn't deliberately trying to run out on you guys. It's just I thought he was going to be. I thought I thought he was going to be dead by now. You're so, obviously uh, the best fighter. And you're abandoning us. Tal, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. So Tal comes in, pushes you guys aside, grabs the puny Martian by the neck, and twists it and breaks it off of his body and throws it to the ground. But you guys weakened him for it, and we're just going to yep. use that. And then he, just like we take his weapons. We, we all we, we divvy his weapons up. We should all divvy the weapons up from from the guards and the slaver. Okay. Yeah. So, so each, each guard has a sword and a dagger. The Zax already has one sword. So you have two other swords to divide up. Who wants two other swords? And two. Uh, and we've got three daggers and two swords left. 
Well, I'm a sword person. I'll take, I'll take a sword that. and a dagger if possible, but I, but I, I'll I, take I, a dagger. Okay, Chad's got a dagger. Let's give yep. um, Tanza and Had the swords because they are both good with swords. Pamela, right. are you okay with a dagger? And we're going to say Pamela has one of the other daggers. <laughs> Tal says, I don't need no puny weapon. And he <laughs> kisses his top two arm biceps. Thark, muscle, oh, one needs. Um, so let's <laughs> see. So out of that, we've got um, swords are with Zach's sword. Zach's had and Tanza has swords. Everybody else has a dagger. Yeah. Does okay. Patterson have one? Yep, Patterson's been... Well, just wait, no. How many do we have? He's just got his muscle. Chad has a dagger. Pamela has a dagger. Patterson, you can give him a dagger if you want. Yeah, let's just give him a dagger. Okay, cool. Okay. We kill the slave, we we kill the slave or we can steal something. <laughs> yeah. uh, when the, the attack started, didn't you say something about having some uh, rifle or a pistol? Outside. That's right. That's right. No, no, no. And that's very good, Zach. Uh, there are each one of these guys has a radium pistol. So well, you maybe have that's three radium maybe pistols. If, well, maybe oh, we should only give Patterson a radium pistol because, you know, the thing is that he was he, he was from World War One, right? So maybe he's more familiar with um, range, explosive type weaponry. Then he is blazer weaponry. Yep, unless he was an officer, in which case he might have had a saber. But yeah, well, let's give him a pistol. Okay, so I'll Patterson a has a dagger yes, and a I pistol. Am familiar with We've got two other pistols. Who wants the two other pistols? Probably someone with the daggers, maybe. Hey guys, not I me. Really I can't. Not me. I, I I don't I don't do I, I don't do guns. Okay, so Tanza doesn't You're... want a pistol. Who wants it then? Sure. Zach will take one. I'll take one. Zax will take one pistol. Yes, I am unfamiliar with British with <clears throat> British military training techniques. Yeah, but yeah, but you're American. How could you not be familiar with guns? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's I'm all right. We're we're, um, we're debating something that doesn't need debating. So, <laughs> I'm old school. so I'm guys, a how, how about you a guys do this? Weapon. From a, a, a more elegant weapon for a more civilized age and all that. Exactly, exactly, exactly right. Let, let's 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 push on. Are you guys okay with the uh, the pistols going to Chad and to Pamela since they only have daggers? Yeah, fine. Yep. Okay. Are you guys? Everyone's okay with that? So everyone's yeah. armed. Everyone's armed now. With some thing at least. Yeah. Okay. Now, as you guys can see, oh, someone pretty. set this wagon hey. on fire. And you can hear explosions of radium yes. <laughs> pistols and stuff, and and the smoke is starting to become quite heavy. So, so let's get downstairs. Right, I suggest let's get moving. Let's go. Let's okay. go. <laughs> and let me just adjust a couple things. So as you guys get down there, at the base of the stairs, you see there are two more guards. And two one. Lines. And I'm going to use one of my threats to take over, um, let's see here, I'm going to try and get this stupid deck of cards to work. I'm going to use a threat to take over the lead of combat so that my Red Guard 13, uh, which I should maybe let you guys see the nameplate, uh, is going to attack first rather than have the players attack first. Okay. Because they, uh, while you guys were stripping the bodies of the other guys, these guys were running up to the commotion. Because the last thing they needed was more combat. <laughs> and so they're running <laughs> up the walls. Two of them. Can you guys see them? And you can see their name tags? Okay. Yeah. And let's yeah. get that off of there. And I need to get rid of one of my threats. So recall. Oh, man. Recall. I'll recall. Oh crap. Well, I screwed up everything. Nope. Okay. That's a lot of people on the stairs. It's a lot of people <laughs> falling down. <laughs> okay. It's like my family on Thanksgiving. Uh -uh. I have a big family, so. When mom yells out dinner, it's 
this herd of elephants. Yeah, you have sort of Christmas part two, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, I had 21 threat. I've used one to have Redguard 2 jump up and attack Had as he comes down the stairs. And that leaves me with only 20 threat left. And he's going to attack you with his sword drawn. And he's got so, cunning and daring. So that's going to be a 12. So when will uh, someone have momentum again? When you guys get some more successes. Oh, okay. Okay. And we've got to start tracking that because I think we've probably messed it a billion times by now. Um, so when you yeah. get more success than what you need for your task, that's generating momentum. So make sure you we're keeping track of it because, to be honest, yeah, I, got I, four, I got four different things going on here on my side. So I need you guys to advocate okay. for yourself. No, I appreciate that. So if we um, kill so if we kill somebody, we get right. Okay, so he's rolled one success, so I need you, Had, to do a, a, a opposition test and roll your daring and, I guess, cunning to see if you're able to block his sword, whatever, stroke. That's, that's me, right? Yep. So what's your daring and cunning together? Give me just a moment. So I think the first time Eight. you've been attacked. Okay, so put that Eight in your target number. Okay. Now, do you have? You should have your talent. Do you get an extra D twenty because it's a blade thing? Yes, I do, and also, um, I think. Ah, uh, no, the bodyguard is just that I can also act for Patterson. I think. Okay. But so that that's not quite relevant now. So I think I do get an extra D twenty for um, peerless peerless sword. Okay, add your... So you'll be doing 3d20 with your target yeah, number. Uh, and I need to reach 14. So here goes. Wow! Okay, so that's fantastic. Nice. Um, so you only needed one to counter. So you've generated two momentum. So I'm going to dish you out two momentum. Yep. We've got to do a better job. And I'm not sure if I'm doing this right with a post test, but let's just say it counts for a post test because it's your action, right? So right. where are you on here, Had? Hey, yeah, the point is to have fun, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. And because we haven't come to your turn yet, Had, you can hang on to those. Right. For, but it, this is generated be... from the Red Guard's turn, not yours. So you still have your turn coming up, so you're not going to lose anything yet. Am I correct in saying they need to be used per phase, per turn? Per round. Right. Yeah. Okay, so that is his uh, turn. I'm not spending any more other threat to let the other red guard go. So now we return to the the player's initiative. So it's your guys' turn. Who wants to go first? It kind of makes sense to have Had go first because he's right there. Yeah, I would say Had, yeah. Now, Had, you can use momentum to, again, you could spend that momentum to buy more D20s to get a better uh, chance of odds against him in your attack. Or you can but save it or you can share it. Is there such thing as a called shot, if you know what I mean by that? Yes, there is a called shot. And okay. I think it's cost you two D... Uh, sorry, two momentum. Let me just see here for... Attack, That's what I thought. Attack... Uh, da, 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 da. Momentum spends. Disarm, dispatch. Move forward and all counter strikes. Feel free, everybody, to look it up because I know there is such a it, it, there is a thing for it. I, f I think it costs two momentum. That's why I'm asking. But uh... I think it costs two momentum too, and I'm just trying to find it. Oh, I remember seeing it in there, but that's the word is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Luck, conflict, dual, and swift momentum, talent. Be damned if I can find it. <laughs> Would it be under range weapons? No, that's that going to be that's going to be your guns and your rifles. Okay. It's going to be moment under momentum spends somewhere. How about moving range zones? Like, does that no? Moving range zones is just how far you can run, and right now you're all trapped on the stairs. Right. Uh, common uses of momentum. 
Bring it up. Oh gosh. Let's see here. Um, this is good. It's a learning moment. Here, let's show. Uh, Maybe is it in here? I don't know. Let's check. Say um, common uses. It's likely to be under combat mechanics. I was just sitting there looking, but I couldn't find it. Yeah, and... So, so uh, what, what are you trying to do? He's That's doing a called one. shot. So... Obstacles, extra damage, disarm, kill minion. Let's say, because this is taking a lot of time, but it's definitely something that's put in our parking lot list for looking up. But let's say the call shot for two momentum will add 2d20. Um, yeah, here then, we go. I think, yeah, I think it's two momentum and then a standard roll. Yeah, and let's say if you make it, let's increase the combat damage by two more dice. How's that? Because there's got to be a benefit to it, right? Right, so I give them to you by placing them on the map. Is that correct? Um, you can, yeah. Um, or you can just say, uh, I think you click on it when it's in your... Oh, it worked, eh? Are you, have you unclicked it? Yeah, I, I've, I've placed them down on the map for you to confiscate. Um, and okay. then I would add... No, I wouldn't add because I'm... Um, because that's for the cold shot. So I'm going for the neck, and I'll roll free d20. Oh, roll actually four. At uh, four d20. Difficult, difficulty number of 14, and here I go. Target number. And wow. the difficulty is going to be yeah. one. Ah, uh, see, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's what. Wow. Oh, oh, what happened here? Oh, we got two. Three successes. We've got but a two. But critical, a critical failure, though. No, hang on, you guys. We got... Yeah, okay, so we're going to take that... Do you want to do... How, how come there's two? You rolled twice. Okay, anyway. You will take the bottom roll because oh, you were rolling four D20. Um, the D20... Now, here's the thing. You can either... I can come up with a complication, or you can give me two threat points. To avoid a complication when you roll a 20. So it's, I'm going to let it be your choice. Do you want me to come up with a complication, which is a bad thing? I'll, uh, I'll, give you two, I'll give you the two fret points. Yay! Vicky gets a collection. So right. I take that from here. Uh, I'm not sure how to No, no, I'm going to do it. Let me handle it because uh, uh, I can do that. So I'm going to deal. That's quicker. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Sorry, I wasn't sure whether I... I thought you said to roll uh, 4d20. Did I roll too many? No, no, you rolled thought, enough. The first time uh, when you rolled three, you didn't. So you spent two momentum to do a called shot. Ah, uh, I so see So you add happened. 2d20 to your regular 2d20 for four in total. Now, right, I've, and we're I've just got, doing yeah. a house rule of giving you a benefit to that because you have succeeded. You only needed one success. So now you get two momentum from that and don't do anything for a second. I want to give you these two momentum because you have choices. You can spend that momentum to increase combat dice. Now, right now with the combat dice, you're going to get to roll. And here's the thing, guys. Um, I know we're supposed to be using the quick um, starter rules. But the quick starter rules only give you two combat dice, and, they, and that's what you get for an arm. So I'm thinking four combat dice for a sword. You get two more for the called shot and succeeding, so that's going to be 6d6 six six you get to roll. If you want, you can spend momentum to buy extra combat dice to do even more damage, if you want. Wow. Or you can save uh, it. Why so right not? now, what as it stands, right now as it stands, you're going to have six combat dice you're rolling. If you and, want and, if he, and if he kills them, he gets, we get moment, moment, momentum as the team, right? No. Oh? No, he's already generated his momentum. We're on to what the damage oh, from okay. that, moment, right. that strike so is. Right, so I'm going to spend one momentum. Okay. Uh, taking that to 7d6, I take it. Yes. Um, oh. And then the, the other momentum I'm going to pass on to uh, probably Zax or someone. So I'm going to roll that. Let's roll your damage first, and then you can decide what you want to do with your next momentum. 
Okay. Look at all those dice! How fun is that? <laughs> all right. Five right. and six are both one each with two effects. Uh, three is nothing. Two is another one. So we got, what, four... Si this way, four, six, eight. That's what I'm counting. Six. So eight. Eight um, stress is what I count. Plus two effects. Is that what you guys get? Yep. Yep. Okay. So as far as um, the effect... And I guess I'm going back to my handout, and I'm going down to melee weapons. And again, I stole the combat thing. So as far as effects for a short sword, I'm going to show it to you guys. See it all there? Um, John Carter, if you scroll down, the qualities are sharp, which would be the effect. So you'd get one more additional stress. Or we could use the Conad rules of Vicious, which is pretty much the same thing Add damage for each effect roll. So they're kind of the yeah. same thing. So I counted and I could be wrong, so make sure 8 points yep. plus 2 effects, that's going to be 10 points of stress onto this guy. And 2 is uh, neck at that. Yes. So. And you don't even need all that because he goes down, your, your sword goes right through his head. Right through his neck. And you pull it out dripping in blood. And he crumbles backwards and he... His body falls on top of his comrade, effectively knocking his comrade prone to the ground. You still have your movement hand, and you still have your spoken word. And well okay, done. Okay, can I... Thank you. Can I pass my momentum on to someone? Yes, sir, you can. Who would you like to do that to? Uh, Tanza. Okay, see if you can, oh, drag, nice. see if you can pull it and put it uh, over to her. Are you able I to drag it? I... Am I able to drag it to... Here we go. Let's just see. I don't... There Perfect. you go. Okay, Perfect. so now I'll do something. And I shall um, well, okay. walk... Yeah. Let's just finish walk. this turn first. I'm just going to walk okay. there. Just and tell then, me when uh, it's my turn. And that's it. Just shout to me. All right. Now, again, so let's look at where everyone's placed. We've got uh, Zach's next in the stairwell, then uh, then Chad, then Tanza. So it makes sense for Zach's probably to go next. Cool. Right. Okay. So you got okay. your movement, um, your spoken slash free action, and your combat action. Again, the guy with the X is dead, yeah. and he is lying on top of his comrade, who is lying on the ground prone. What would you like to do, Zach's? I'm going to come up and I'm going to take uh, the sword out and uh, I'm going to two-hand it and try and stab him through the eye while he's laying on the ground. Okay, and I'm going to give him a difficulty of three to oppose that. So go ahead and roll your melee attack. Okay, and this is what? Cunning? Uh, cunning oh, I think it's and, cunning uh, and daring. Let me just double check on that and show it to you guys. Yeah, so melee... Cunning and daring. Okay. Because you're it. using your sword. Got it. Okay. Okay. And how do we do here? One success. That's all you needed. Let me see if he actually opposes. And he's got a DC of three. So he's got to have three successes to even meet it. And he fails. And you hit. So you're going to have to start out with, you're going to have four combat dice uh, combat damage dice to roll. So four D6. You don't have any uh, momentum. It, it looks like he, he succeeded three times here because one is critical. Oh, yeah, that's success. right. That's right. Well, thanks for calling me on that. Yeah, let's make a DC4 and he fails because that's more fun. <laughs> I love it. I'm nice. GM. What I say goes. He's got a whole dude on top of him. So yeah. Okay. So go ahead and roll your damage to the 4d6, please. Oh, sorry. Wrong button. 4d6. Yes. Yeah. Okay. D6. Roll. Uh, okay, so we're getting great. Yeah, so... <coughs> 4 plus 2. Yeah, so I count 6 stress. Because we're going to count the effects as uh, additional one additional stress. So really, five and six are basically double, right? 
So six success, and that's enough to kill him. You stick your blade right through his skull, shattering it. And he is dead. Okay. Um, let's just move Let you me. guys down. So as you guys come into the room, there is no one else in the let's room. Just kick those bodies out of the way. So <laughs> you guys can just come on down. Just move move your tokens as you want. And you see the guard room, and you see on the the tables and stuff, you see that there's various collections of ill-gotten goods on the table that's being sorted by whoever does work in this room normally. It's a processing room where they're going through stuff. And so each table has got piles of items, bags, pouches, harnesses, weapons piled up on it. Um, again, uh, we're out of combat for the quick moment. Uh, who would like to do anything with this? I would actually like to search it. I would actually like to shout something out because there is something that for it might just I'm looking for a plain leather bag. A plain leather bag dyed blue because it has something that we need badly. Leather bag dyed blue, let me know. Okay. Right. I think I found it over here. Okay. Well, let's roll. Let's roll. Right? We're going to roll to okay. investigate. Um, so that's going to be kind of using your reasoning to search. So we should all go to different places and investigate, right? Yeah, so pick a spot, you guys. you got a whole bunch of tables. Move your tokens to where you want to go. So is uh, Patterson and Tao going to join us? Oh, good point. Oh, I suck at doing this NPC stuff. <laughs> I noticed you changed the look of Patterson last time. Yeah, because, you know... I didn't. He, he was there with a the needle. It looked weird. <laughs> so you, you know, Tal is going to go back. stand at the top of the stairs and guard. That. And uh, well, actually, I'm going to have one more. Okay, so let's go ahead. Um, who wants to search first? And we're going to have you guys roll it. So reason seems like pretty good. And I'll use my momentum to search quickly. Search well, more thoroughly. Hang on a second, okay, guys. I, let's just figure out what we're going to use for search uh, investigation rules. Um, I'm thinking you guys want to go quickly through the stuff, so let's do reason and daring, okay? And is everybody okay with Tanza going first? I was, so for investigation, we do reason and cunning, right? Yeah. So that's how you're going to figure out your target number. Or um, yeah. Or, or what else? What do you think would be good? Oh, I was going to say uh, reason and luck. Luck is very special. Special momentum. You have a very limited supply. Once you use it, okay. it's very hard it's to get back. It's different from any other games then. But yeah, reason and cunning then. Yeah. So uh, we're, right. we're going to roll. Let's do one person at a time so it doesn't get confusing to see how successful okay. you I'll get. I'll go. Yep. Go ahead, Tanza. All right. So let's see. Reason and cunning. And I gotta, so and now, I'm sorry to interrupt. But now, do you want to use your... Momentum now, or do you want to hang on to it, or what do you want Can to do? Can I hang on to it, or will, will it, does at, it go bye bye? When you go to the next floor, it will go bye bye. Yeah, you might uh, as well use it. I'll, I'll use it here. I'll use it to, to search like extra thoroughly, basically. Okay. Okay. So then roll three d twenty, please. All right. Oh, I found some awesome stuff. <laughs> What'd you I get? love how you Two say successes. it. <clears throat> okay, cool. Um, okay, as you go through it. Maybe just, I found some of my stuff. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. That's why I'm bringing up your character sheet so I can look at it. You find your father's sword. And you find your harness. Awesome. So with, now I'm with the medal of helium of your city and helium on it. Oh, and that that might come in handy if we if we actually meet up with the parks outside. Because they might recognize that, you know, I'm connected to their warlord. Yep. So again, you find your father's sword, your jet Wait, sword, so and you find your noble harness. Okay. All right. Awesome. Who wants to look next? Oh, it's actually go. Go ahead. Roll it, then, uh, there we go, what we got? You find your mechanic 
tools and you find uh, well that's pretty much it. You find your mechanic tool pouch, okay? Dex? Uh, you broke up a bit there. Me mechanical you find, tool You find your mechanical tool pouch. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, who wants to go next? I'll go next. Okay. I've got a target number 15. Okay. That's pretty good. I got 14 and 3, so that's 2. Yeah. Let's see what your stuff was on your thing. Okay. Well, I need to... You, you want to pick two I, of these yeah. that you want? Which one of those do you want? On your core like equipment, the, you have disguise the, kit, these tools, or poison kit. You can pick two. I was thinking disguise kit, and uh, the thieves' tools looks good. Okay, so you have those now back in uh, on your person. Okay, wonderful. Now, what about again, the disguise kit? You get, you rarely get two things. Well, because I had two successes. I yeah, okay, yeah. Dependent. Yep. Okay, so let me just, uh, because Norms may not be aware of this. So, Norm, on Barsoom, there are pigments that can you can rub on your skin to make it look of a different race. So that's part of what you have. So you now have a disguise kit that you could rub this pigment oil all over your skin to turn into a red Martian or a black yeah. Martian. Um, so just be aware of that, because I don't know okay. if you've read the books and know about it. Yep. So you can easily uh, that, change. I do about that, yeah. You can change your banana yeah. color skin if you like at some point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, he gets in, he gets into trouble with that in um. <laughs> I can't remember the city he goes to in the second book, but uh, yeah. So yeah. how do I? If I want to edit this, do I? These items back or no? No, uh, just just write it down. We'll we'll remember. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Um. Who's next? Hey. Uh, who's next? So I wonder, you know, if it's kind of funny looking okay. at Chad. Go ahead. If Chad used his disguise kit to like make his skin green, then he looks like <laughs> a two arm star. Chad. Oh, my God, 20. Oh, high dice are bad, aren't they? Oh, sorry, Chad. <laughs> yeah, you, you're, you're not really finding, you're, you're not enabled to find anything better than what you've already picked up from that guard. Oh, well. And a, um, and, a but, um, and, a and a critical failure on a 20, though, on this, like, what does that do? Yeah. I find, I find another guard. <laughs> yeah, <No>. probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, it, if it was Dungeons and Dragons, suddenly the room would explode. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you stick your head into a pile of uh, harnesses and you get some kind of poop all over your hands. From sticking it in ah. there, from the, then you get some sti now you get stink hand all, all the or stink hand, but yeah, with I, I'm the, gonna with the I'm complication. Gonna rub it on <laughs> oh yeah. great! Yeah, Panza. unfortunately Panza you didn't get anything better. The other, uh, the other side of the room. Okay. All right, who's next? <laughs> One success. All right. <laughs> Pamela, looking at your character sheet, would what uh, pick pick one thing that you you would dearly love to have back in your possession? Uh, where are you? Oh, My and noble I should harness. mention, I should, I should, I should actually. Um... Oh yeah, sorry. Go ahead. What did you want? My noble harness. Okay, and so your noble harness, you read the description there, what, what's yeah. all in it there too, okay. All right, cool. You find your noble harness with the metal of Tarth on it, uh, that's bejeweled and decked as fitting a, a high diplomat of your standing. Okay, so you do have some jewels on yours, as well as, of course, um, Tanza has a, a noble's harness as well, which beja bedazzled. Okay, it's, <laughs> it's uh, the noise of the fighting is continuing, and... The flames are coming even more. The s smoke is getting thicker up here. Um, we should move downstairs. Are there any put food and water in? It's probably quite important if we're going to end up in the desert. Uh, as you look about, there's nothing up here. This seems like a processing thing for mostly harnesses and stuff. So if everybody wants to at least grab a basic sword, if you don't already have one, and if everybody wants to at least grab a basic dagger, so everybody should have a dagger and sword. Okay. I'll grab a, I'll grab a 
I'll grab a sword. Okay. So did you say there's uh, no sort of water bottles or anything? Not up in this part. This seems more like an okay. equipment equipment processing room. Right. Ooh, I just love doing that. Okay. Uh, what do you guys want to do next? It's getting smoky and yucky up here. We should go down. One more, yes. One more. <laughs> okay. So you guys are all going down. Let's all move our maps and move our tokens down. Tao's like going, hurry, hurry, we're missing all the battle and the glory. Yeah, of course he And is. Patterson's like hanging on to uh, to um, Tanz's harness yeah. for dear life. And where is he? I like I try pushing, now now that I have like maybe like two or three swords, I try pushing one into his hand and he just sort of uh -huh. kept, like... Yeah, he's gonna, I don't know. He's gonna take that it. Wasn't and, a and, he's, at all. he's gonna take it and hold it kind of uncomfortably. Awkwardly. Yeah. I don't know, Mr. I don't know, Mr. British guy, <laughs> hey, what how would do, you could tell us what his training would be. Yeah, I mean he's better with a bayonet on top of a rifle, obviously, right? From the time <laughs> period he's from. Yeah, okay. yeah certainly yeah. if he was a ranker it would be <coughs> rifle and bayonet. Yeah. Unless he was an officer then he might have a saber. Okay, so as you get down, you see one guard is kind of cowering uh, in the corner. I'm going to move him. Cowering? So, yeah, like cowering? He, cowering. I mean, there's a reason wow. why he's a slaver. He's got no, no whatever. So let's see. He is kind of cowering by the door until he hears you guys scramble down. And he looks at you guys with fear. And he's like, looks outside to the battle that's in, in, in raging outside. And then looks back at you guys and isn't quite sure what to do. And instead he goes, uh, he says, he drops his weapons, moves to the side, and he goes, Just go. I want nothing to do with this. Just just go. Just go. Just go. I want nothing. <laughs> I, I surrender. Just leave me alone. I don't want to deal with you guys. So you guys are now in what seems to be the living quarters. And you see here on the side, you see uh, counters that would have foodstuffs and would have um, barrels and kegs of water where I'm pinging. See on the corner there on the walls? Yeah. Are there, are there any well, backpacks? Yay! I'm thirsty. I go, I go, I'm, I'm just going to go straight over and get them. I suggest we grab all the food and water we can carry as we may end up in the desert. Are there any backpacks we can put on our back or anything? Or? Yeah, there's Let's water bags yes. that you can hook to your... To your Bodies. harnesses. There's also because okay. uh, this is a traveling caravan, so people that would go on watch yeah, at night would have a bag of food, do. sustenance. You know the typical warrior's fare. So you can each grab, um, let's say, two things of water, two things of two bags of food. Uh, that hey, look, com comfortably Lumbus fit bread. on your harness. They look Lumbus bread. <laughs> yeah. Tal looks at you all contempt and runs out into the battle. Oh, of course. <laughs> Young guy. He's probably gone. Not. He's probably uh, gone now. See you later, douche. <laughs> yeah, go get killed. You're young. Who cares? You never die. <laughs> no, and he's like, revenge is mine. How dare they put chains on a Thark as he runs out. And he jumps the nearest uh, slaver in his path. And where are we at with uh, what's his nuts? It's still following Patterson's still following Tanza like a baby. <laughs> and there we go. So, anybody want to do anything in here? Again, there's smoke, there's the sounds of battle with just fiercely in going on outside. I think we should just head out. I was yep. gonna ask Tal if um, he could recognize any, any, any of these. You know. He's gone. Uh, yeah. You guys are screwing around looking for water and food. Why there's a battle raging? He's got nothing but contempt for that. He's gone. Now I suggest one suggestion is if we could go in formation, we could fight back to back until we're out of here. What do you think? Well, the battle does look pretty thick, like towards the front of it, but towards the the back area, like up north. I'm just gonna, you know, north, like top of the screen, basically. It looks less thick. So maybe if we can sneak out the, you know, sneak out the back way. All right. Good observation. As much you know, as I like it. Or it's like, you know, I... if you go over to the second screen, you know, the, se the, the second screen, it looks like right. we're in a canyon. 
it, it looks like there might be a little less up, like, up the embankment, as opposed to down. I don't know. Like... Good observation. As much as I like a good fight, our priority is getting out of here. So why don't you leave the way? Yeah, we've had... We've... So some information that you guys would would know about I'm this I'm kind of thinking, like, you know, we go down here and then go, like, up that way. Can I give you some information? Yeah. Okay, yep. so some information that you guys would know um, is that the road that you were traveling is quite common for uh, surface caravans, but it is also quite common for war hoon raiding parties. Common for what? Say that again? He skipped. Okay, it's a, it's a, it's a road that is commonly ambushed by both war hoons and tharks alike. It is a dangerous road that the wagon is on. Um, surrounding it is basically, you know, the Badlands or, I mean, the, basically the, the floors of the dead oceans covered with the moss that's typical of, of a lot of John Carter adventures. So it's, uh, you're in kind of a ravine that is kind of the, the path for the road heading to Zidanga. Around you are Badlands covered with moss, the dead sea floors. So basically I'm giving you this information so you can decide whether you want to, if you're going down the road towards Sedanga, are you going to go back down the road in the direction of the war wounds behind you, or are you going to head out to the bad lines and get away from the fighting and regroup and then make your final decision what you guys want to do? Again, it's uh, fires all around, so you've got really split seconds to make this decision. Does anyone have any leadership abilities? As their talents? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. Take, take control and be <clears throat> captain or anything? No, I don't think I so. do. Yeah. Zach does. Do you guys right. want to roll? <clears throat> After all, that he's a make, firstborn. That would make sense. After all, Zach is a firstborn, so... Yeah. And he is, uh, he is a military officer commanding his own <laughs> ship. So, those of you who have... He's a first. He's a firstborn. The rest of us are just a middle child. <laughs> So, uh, those of you with leadership ability, if you guys want to try and take command or take the lead on this, you can. Really, anyone can. Alright. Uh, but so if you're going to sit and have a committee discussion, then the fire is going to come and, and shit's going to happen. No, no, no. I, I, what you, I'm going to turn to uh, my uh, Black Martian friend and ask him for his humble opinion, but we need to make a decision quickly. Yeah. Uh, so let let's get out of here and uh, and move away from the battle, uh, and uh, and then we'll we'll make a plan from there. But we need to take stock and see what the lay of the land is. Yeah, and I right. don't think that all of us have a real. I don't think that us we may be a plucky group, but I don't think we have a big chance with this many tharks and flavors around. Yeah. Well, if you if you lead the way, then Zax will follow. Okay. <clears throat> now um, that red guard. It snuck out the back way where you guys were chit chatting and looking for stuff. He he snuck out of there. Probably gonna warn his friends, but. So how do we get no. away from the battle? Like. Yeah, uh, I'm just gonna have uh, Zax. If you're gonna take the leadership thing, can you do me a roll? And we're gonna do daring and what would be daring? Let's do daring and might to see if you guys can escape the battle and dodge uh, the different groups of warriors fighting it out. Okay, sorry, you broke up. You said daring and what? Daring and might to see how physically fast you guys can go and maybe avoid the groups of fighting tharks and slavers outside. Stress confusion. Two successes. Okay, I'm going to say that Zach's has succeeded in leading you through the battle. 13. And away out of the ravine. And now, did you guys want to go down the road? Or, uh, Zax, I guess you're going to decide. Are you going down the road? Sure. Towards St. Danga, or are you going to go across Badlands? And we're going to let Zax make that decision as the leader. Yeah. Uh, so I, I just want to get far enough away and then in the, uh, you know, a little bit down the road, uh, but not you know, just far enough away that we have some time to actually talk and discuss because I don't know these people from, from Adam. So you're going to go down the road? Yeah, slightly down the road. Down the far road. Enough away to get out of it. Okay. 
<clears throat> okay, so and I'm, gonna, and I'm gonna say, you know, keep keep an eye out, you know, you know, the, the hills have eyes. Uh, everybody, be on guard. Okay, okay, so you guys kind of hoof it out of there, and you kind of hoofing it down at least, mm, let's say, half an hour. And I don't know the Barsoomian uh, time things yet, so whatever. Um, nobody else has momentum right now, so we're gonna end that scene with a successful escape. From the ambush, are you able to dodge Tharks who thought you were probably just other slaves? And, and it looked like as you were running through, they were gathering up some of the slaves or just killing them outright because they have no value to them, really. They just enjoy the, the lust for battle and, and the slavers were overmatched. And the, you got out of the wagon just in time because it started crumbling as it was engulfed in flames. So you've gone half an hour or so down the road and you pull over like pull over you kind of scamper to where there's a bunch of rocks and you have some cover to kind of sit down and, and discuss what and what your next move is as far as group of people and I'm going to move you guys all to a new map on roll 20 and bring you up let's see and let me know if you guys are all into the new map hopefully you see a nice Barsoomian like um, Landscape. Anybody having problems with seeing that landscape? No, just got that. Okay. Everyone's good? Yeah, that's great. Good choice. All right. And uh, poor old Tal is like with his people and he's gone, unfortunately, so I'm going to get rid of him. Too bad he would have been helpful. <laughs> okay. So you're off to the side of the road and... This is the, the Badlands. Um, I hope you guys have all kind of read your backgrounds a little bit. Because there's yeah. going to be some knowledge that some of you have and some knowledge that you don't. So go ahead and role play it out as far as what's next. Um, okay, so I'll say uh, let's uh, let, let's stop here. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know, you know, what your goal is, uh, you know, but I'm, you know, I'm trying to get back to uh, to my airship, uh, you know, there, uh, you know, kind of. Can we? Sorry, can we reduce the music volume a little bit? Absolutely. Sorry about that, guys. If you want, I can turn yeah. it off completely. A little bit's fine. Um, is there anywhere um, like a bit secluded, like a kind of a, um, a, a, a crack in, in one of the uh, obelisks or something? Okay, so before you is is really, um, again, we've got the moss-covered dead sea bottoms. In the distance, you can see um, a range of hills that eventually lead to a range of mountains. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say Pamela, who is, um, will volunteer that uh, you need to get across those mountains to get to Zadanga. That's probably the quickest route. And obviously she'll suggest to you all that um, the road, as you've learned, is very dangerous and treacherous for such a small party. And so she pulls out from her harness... There's a secret compartment, and she pulls out a map of the area. And again, ah. we'll just show you this. So, and again, so um, you guys are, as far as Zadanga, you are, and I can't pin on this particular map, but you are, I'd say, north and uh, northeast of Zadanga right now. And you can kind of see that little mountain range above Zadanga as a city name because you're, you're just on the other side of that. Closer probably to the crater. Guess of crater, you're kind of over there. Well, I suggest... Um, since um, he's kind of the leader of our whole planet, how about we make our way to Helium? And, um, basically, you know, try and, um, make our way to our separate locales from there. 
Okay, and ju and judging from the map, just so you know, Zedango you could probably make within a few days. Helium, it's going to be a longer journey, probably a couple of weeks, and you don't have enough water or food for that. Just so where? You know. uh, so I'm just trying to see where we are. Uh, oh, I see. So, yeah. If we can get a airship in uh, Zodanga, uh, we can get to Helium easily. I think we should uh, go there and see if we can uh, get a ride or okay. you know, take a ride. Chad, Pamela, what's your thoughts? I think we should go to um, Zanga just because it's the closest to our I, location. I think I agree. Is there, there's only one, one way there. There's not a sort of alternate route we can take. You can take the road, which will take you uh, probably a little bit longer, but it's a smoother uh, route. It, it's a road that goes through the mountains and the mountain passes. It's, it's like a, you know, a gravel road. But the problem is, is that it's prime with ambushers and bandits and it's very dangerous that way. You, but it also is longer. If you cut through the mountains, you can cut it down to about a two, three day journey. If you go the road, it will take you probably five days, maybe six days, and you may encounter enemies. Also, the, uh, the the mountains may offer us uh, caves to rest in, right? Yes. So, that sounds like a better plan. Let's go with that. Yeah. I'd okay. say that's a good idea. Okay. And just as far as marching order... Who you guys want to be in front? Front, middle, back. Uh, and, and I'll say, uh, Camilla, you seem to, you have a map. Are you familiar with uh, with this terrain? Let's put Patterson at the front. <laughs> <laughs> Patterson is like, you know, he's like uh, he's standing close to Tanza, and he doesn't understand half what's going on, and he's starting to poke his skin. It's starting to get a little red and somewhat and sunburnt. He's not, he's not feeling this, you know? He's, like, wiping the sweat off, and he's... Oh, yeah, he seems to be drinking a lot of his water a little bit too much, too. I'm beginning to re... I'm beginning to reevaluate my opinion of aliens. <laughs> 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 All right, who, yeah, wants let, go, who wants to go in front? I can do. do. Yeah, do we have somebody that is uh, more familiar with this terrain from this area? Well, Pamela has the has the map. I, I would say it would be either myself or Pamela. Yeah. How about you two go go ahead, like sort of? Okay. Fall. Okay. You guys want to walk and 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 double then, uh, Pamela yeah, and Had up front, mm -hmm. and yeah, then um, I'll babysit the alien. I think probably Patterson is kind of feeling more comfortable too with Had. So let's have Tanza and Patterson following up, and walking in twos. <laughs> And then um, Chad and Z Zaz, are, yeah, are you guys okay in the back? Yeah, yeah for sure. Okay, and as and so we're going to do a little bit more theater, theater of the mind because we're not really going to use this as far as, you know, traveling up the hills and all that sort of stuff. Um, we're just going to have you guys journey the first day through. And if I could have Had and Pramila roll kind of a, a perception check which would be a reason and um, would be a good thing. Reason and maybe maybe daring, maybe? What do you guys think? I'm not sure about that. Reason, what's well, a good I'm perception check? I'm just thinking uh, reason and homeland. Oh, no, homeland's not. No. So. No, unfortunately, <coughs> I don't have it like Conad does. Uh, so reason and stress computing. No. Because I think daring is movement, right? So you're traveling. So yeah, what you're going to notice while you're traveling. Daring. Yeah. Okay. No. I so think daring is reasoning. So. I... So go ahead and let's have had and uh, Pamela roll reason and yep, daring. Yep. Um, just on that. There we go. I hope you guys don't mind. I'm just going to move your tokens around a little bit there. Let's move you up. Okay, what did we get? Wow. Okay. Um, 
Just need to see. Pamela's got one success then. Is that right? Or am I looking at old stuff? Oh, no. This is um, Had Hadas. Okay, Pamela, I want you to roll too because you're up front and you have the map and you've studied this area. Okay. So I need both of you guys because Had didn't roll so great. He rolled a, a 20 for a complication and he got one success. Yeah. Okay, what'd you roll? One success. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, Had, unfortunately for you, just wait, you can have a choice. You can give me two threat or you can have a complication. Oh. Um, how long will the sessions left? <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll give you two threat. Okay, cool. Okay, um, okay, after a majority of the day hiking across the moss covered des uh, Dead Sea bottom, Four. you guys. The, sw the word is sward. <laughs> sward. Okay. Um, you come across a particular area, which is really strange. Out in the middle of nowhere, Camilla spots and had um, a really strange area. It's a patch of red green, sorry, red grass that moves quietly in the breeze. And it's uniform in a square shape. Odder still is that it actually appears to be some sort of huge lawn there by design. And it sticks out of the surrounding um, landscape. Run away from it. <laughs> <laughs> so just use your, again, theater of mind to imagine this weird, odd, square shaped patch of red grasslands. And I'm going to take some... What do you guys want to do? Poke it. Do you guys walk towards it? Yeah. I think we yeah. walk towards it. Okay, so if the grass is up to about your knees, does anyone want to go into it? Walk on it? Walk through it? Yeah. Search it? Poke it. Um, I want to poke it. Prod it with my sword, yeah, do the same thing. Okay. Do you guys span out fan out to do it? Or are you going to yeah. keep tight in a group? Always we'll we'll fan out. <clears throat> okay. Sorry? I think spanning out would be the best. Spanning yeah. out? Okay. So this is, a, is this is really quite a strange area. It's about um, 100 by 100 meters. So it's quite large. Um, if I can have all of you, please to roll um and we're gonna do it a little different than what they say in the quick start because i just want to get the best number so everybody roll 1d20 and we'll take uh we'll take the lowest number as the best roll 1d20 1d20 no target okay. low number is good all right so tansa got a two i got a two had got two. What did I get here? A nine. All right. So it looks like Hansa and Had have the best rolls. And you two. Nineteen. Sorry, did I miss anybody? Okay. 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 Nineteen. All right. Hansa and Had, you guys are searching fairly close together, and you both see a glimmer of something in. In the in the grass, something shiny. Did you see that? Ooh, something shiny! As you get closer, can you guys see that? You find a hatch. Do you guys see that? It's mine. Yeah. <laughs> you find a hatch. You find a metal door in the ground, actually. As you tap on it with your swords, uh, the metal is, is unknown under? to you. But it seems to have some ancient symbols on it. Maybe ancient Barsoomian symbols, but uh, you don't recognize the symbols at all. No one? Has anyone got a uh, academic It's all Barsoomian skills? Greek to me. <laughs> uh, oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, no one. Let's, and, and even if you guys, even if we had... We had your rural knowledge checks. You, it, it would come up <coughs> negative. Yeah. Will the hatch open? Okay, you want to take some time to try and open it? Yeah, why sure. not? Okay, let's have yeah, Had. So, yeah. Had, go ahead. Uh, 
Do you guys all want to do like a group? Let's do a team assist to try and open it. Just yeah. so you guys yeah. experience Look teamwork. Patterson. Let's what have Patterson we... try because like he's the strongest. Like he, he's got the whole earth muscles thing going on. Okay, well let's have him him go with you guys. He can be the leader. So how teamwork works is that we designate one player as the leader. The rest are the assistants. If that leader rolls a success, at least one success, then he can then add the assistant's successes to it. Now, assistants can only roll 1d20 that they could potentially add in. If you So if like half of you get successes, you can add that to the leader's success as long as he's rolled at least one as well. Okay? I know that seems really weird, but you are all assistants. Patterson's going to be the leader. He's going to use his might and his cunning to try and open this hatch. I was going to let one of you play your characters do it because it's more fun. But in the story, you're right. The Jasumian muscles would uh, be very, very strong. So if everyone could roll a 1d20, and I'll have Patterson roll. Let's keep track of all it. Ooh, a three. three. And, and we're going to use his target number, which is going to be 11. I'm sure I'm doing this wrong. Sorry, Chris Birch, if I'm doing this wrong. And he's going to roll his. And he gets one success. Okay. So, oh man, can, let's see here. So let's, how are we going to figure this out? Everything, 11 and under is a success. He's got one. What's Chad? Chad rolled one. So then we have two successes. Camilla rolled 16. That's a fail. Uh, how come Chad rolled twice? Least, Chad rolled twice? We had twice? two. We had two threes. I know that much. Oh, God. What a mess. Okay, well. Unfortunately, even working together, even Patterson straining his white Jasumian muscles cannot get this thing open. He falls backwards and knocks all of you over. Oh. Is there any identifiable, um, like a, a, a latch, not a, not a latch, like a keyhole or a slot or a slap? <laughs> or push here. <laughs> it's it's a hatch, and you you guys are pulling by the, the edges and unable to move it, and you see the symbols on it there in the picture. What In the book, there there's a door that you need... Um, is it a sound or a tone? I can't remember. There's a couple of different. He's got a couple of different trapdoors. Some with needle keys. Some with light. Yeah, that's light it. Things. I, I, yeah. Yeah. But no. I mean, as you basically. Huh? Crap. Yeah. I wonder if still was under there. Uh, Zach is going to stand up and uh, start scanning around to see if there's anyone coming or noticing us doing this. Okay, and as you stand up in the distance, you start to see a big, big, big dust cloud rolling in, and you know, it's, you know it's a mega sandstorm. All Barsuniums know the danger of a sandstorm rolling in, and it looks like it's rolling in quick. And you guys are, I'd say, about a mile and a half to cover. To cover, yeah, to the mountains maybe, because you've been. This is kind of like the hills, and then going into the mountains in the far distance. Well, I would say, considering that sandstorm, we want to be getting this hatch open. Yeah, I let everybody know what I see and say, we need to find cover now. Well, let's, um... Let's try again. Let's try again. Let's... With the hatch. Yeah, yeah let's okay. give it another go. Does anyone else want to be the leader this time instead of Patterson, who's kind of hopeless? Anybody? Someone Nobody? Has, has okay, a... we're going to have Patterson again then. Okay. I'm sorry, unless someone spoke up and I missed it. I can do it. Okay, Had, what is your might and, I guess, cunning together for the target number? Everyone's going to set Had's target number. Right. So my might would be five. And what was the other one? 
Cunning? Cunning, and my cunning would be six, so 11. Okay, so everyone set your target number is 11. Okay. Has and how gonna, many? Let me just finish. Has going to be the only one rolling 2d20. Everyone else will roll 1d20, okay? And roll okay. once, please. So one die at target 1d20 with a tar target of 11. Sorry, everybody? Oh, God. Uh-oh. Okay. Had is the only one rolling two. Everybody else is rolling one. Oh, I have to roll two? Right. Because you are the lead and everyone else is an assistant. So ta Had needs to get at least one success. And he does. He gets two I get successes. Two. Okay, so let's see what everyone got. Tanza got no successes. Camilla got a 20. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I don't, I shouldn't have rolled. Chad, did you roll? Pamela, sorry, Pamela. Chad, did you roll? And Zax, did you roll? Yeah, I I succeeded. Okay, so you you got the ten, and Chad got one. So we got one, two, three, and two. So f five successes and a twenty, and you still can't get it open. The group fails. Yeah, Zach says we really. There's a huge sandstorm coming. We really and have to. And you've lost um, time. Yeah. Yeah. And you can start so feeling the, the biting of the sand. Of the first part of the sandstorm starts to hit you. It starts stinging into your skin like little mosquitoes, ping, ping, pinging all over your sand. I mean, all over your skin. So start running for the hills. Um. Who, whoever Some wants people... to run, tell me you're running. And whoever wants to stay, uh, watch, uh, go ahead and stay. I'm going to run. Okay, Pamela's running. Who else is running? I'll run. I think I'll run as well. Why not? <laughs> can I... Uh, Zach is running. Can I try touching my bare skin to the red grass? Sure, sure. And? It's, it's uh, normal does, grass. Does anything happen? No. It's normal grass. You may get a, you know, a little bit of a skin irritation. Maybe you're allergic. Uh, I just thought it might have something to do with the hatch. That was all. No, it's normal grass. Right, well, that was a blowout. I guess we'll have to run. All right. You guys are running for the hills, hey? Looking for cover? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to roll a couple of different things here. Uh -huh to see if you guys make it. <laughs> a one and a 20. Okay, well, I'm going to say that the the one is a critical success with the two successes balances out the 20, and that leaves us with one success. So that means you guys do make it to the mountains, and it's getting darker and darker, and the wind's picking up, and more and more sand's coming, and it's biting into your skin and blowing your hair all over the place, and uh, it's becoming very, very painful. In fact, um, we'll even say that Patterson trips and falls as he's running, and Tansa has to go back and pull him to his feet, and he's like, visibility is going down next to zero. Um as the sand fills the air and you start choking and choking on it. And uh, finally, who's in the head, hands in, in the foreground, and you manage, as you reach into uh, some of the stonework, uh, you go to the back of a ravine, and you shout for everyone to follow you, and you find the opening of a cave. What do you do? Go oh. in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For sure. Okay, so you guys quickly run in. Without even okay. checking it out or throwing caution to the wind, you got to get out nope. of the sandstorm or you could choke nah, and die. No caution. Don't want to do that. No. Right. <laughs> so as you the go in. outside, it's greater than the sweat inside. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That should so, probably be a. So as you go into this cave, it seems quite. Quite, it seems to recess deeper into uh, the bowels of the mountain. It kind of seems to go down at a slant, this kind of dirt, rocky path. And you try to get away from the mouth of the cave, away from the sand, and 
you go in about in 20 feet um, and it gets darker and darker you can barely see because of the darkness of the sandstorm outside and the darkness within the cave so you guys are 20 feet into this cave out of the Ready? choking I like sand. the underground yeah what do you guys want to do out of camp sit down and rest Any ideas? It's very dark in here. I suggest starting a fire and sitting down to get to get a breather. Been a hard day. We just escaped. <laughs> We're all tired. Okay. Well, there's no kindling around, and any kindling would be outside. Might might have been some of the moss or dry grass or brush. Um, who's searching? Is anyone searching the cave or you're just at the spot 20 feet within? Um, Zach's is searching. Zach's is searching. Okay, go ahead and roll, uh, go ahead and roll a uh, perception check. So I guess that'd be reason and daring. So you're moving around the cave in the dark looking for something. And I'm going to give you a DC of two because it is very dark. Okay. So reason and daring, uh, and I need to uh, 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 difficulty level of two. I think you just said yes. What's your target number? Okay, my target number is thirteen. Okay. Uh, okay. <coughs> I've uh, I've just got to nip to the water closet. I'll be back in a second. <laughs> I still have to get a drink for the fridge too. <laughs> Cheers. Do you guys want to take a five minute break? Sure. Okay, everyone, let's take a five minute break.